Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my quick review of the new Sony a7 IV. Now, if you want all the details, uh, deep dive into performance, features, all of those things, autofocus, I recommend that you check out the definitive review instead. But today, I just want to give you kind of the highlights and my findings after spending some time with uh, Sony's new mid-level model. And I call it mid-level because I think that the a7 IV has been moved to a little bit higher price point at $2,500 US dollars, but that creates more market separation for a true entry-level full-frame model to slot in beneath that. In the meantime, however, we have not only moved upscale in price, we've moved upscale in performance. We'll dive into the list of features and performance right after a word from our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Phantom Wallet, the minimalist modern wallet that sets you free from the bulky traditional wallet while also making it easy to access your cards and money when you need them, thanks to their unique fanning mechanism. Visit phantomwallet.com to check out their unique sizes, styles, and finishes that span from aluminum to wood to carbon fiber. You can even customize your wallet with new accessories like a money clip, cash holder, ID display, and even the Chipolo tracking integration if you're the kind of person who loses their wallet. Use code DUSTIN15 for 15% off when you're ready to check out. So the new headline feature here is a brand new 33 megapixel CMOS sensor that is a really exceptional one. I really love this particular resolution point and in my test I found that it delivered great color, great detail. It also exhibits very very strong dynamic range performance, probably the best of what I've seen from a Sony camera. I not only had an easy job in recovering shadows, which is more typical these days, but I also was able to have a little bit more latitude in recovering highlights, which means that recovering skies, for example, in photos has never been simpler. You may never need HDR again with a camera with as good of dynamic range as this. I also found that high ISO performance was very good with extremely clean through 12,800. Um, you could still easily use 25,000 uh, 600 and even the upper limits of the normal range of 51,200 still looked fairly decent. You can go all the way up to I believe 204,800 in the expanded range but that's there more for marketing than anything else. We've also got things like the addition of the new HEIF file format and uh, various other options including lossless uh, raw uh, compressed raws that means that file storage is fairly easy with this camera as well. I really like the sensor and I think that it's a sweet spot for resolution for a lot of people and for a lot of applications. Also improved is the autofocus system which really has basically inherited the Alpha 1's incredible autofocus system with 759 phase detect AF points backed up by 425 contacts contrast AF points, about 94% coverage of the sensor, and of course just incredible performance with the ability to track um, eyes from humans, from animals, and from birds as well, and the ability to do all of that real-time tracking while recording video as well, which is another huge asset here. We have the same 10 frames per second burst rate seen previously, but the buffers have significantly grown to where now you can get over a thousand lossless compressed RAWs or JPEGs and even 828 uncompressed RAW plus JPEGs, which is obviously incredible. It means you're never going to have to really deal with that issue of the buffer emptying while you sit around and wait for it at this point. The limitation here is not the focus system or the buffer depth, but the viewfinder experience really is, uh, you know, it's nothing compared to the dedicated sports models like the A9 or the Alpha 1. You're still going to see that blackout in between every frame, and in fact, at the highest 10 frames per second, you don't even really see a real-time view. You see more of like a storybook look of a split second of the previous image, and so it's not nearly as an engaging process for tracking action as what you'll find in the more sports oriented models but for normal applications be it you know taking portraits you know shooting general action or events the focus system here is incredible and i got very high keeper results and there were very high keeper results when i handed the camera to a person who had never used it before and asked them to take some portraits of me and this was operating in extreme conditions about minus 25 degrees celsius very impressed there 
We also get a lot of video related improvements that includes the ability now to uh, record up to 4K 60, though with a Super 35 crop factor. A whole lot of different options when it comes to file formats. There is no video recording limit now at this point, which is something that I certainly welcome. You've also got a few different new features like a focus, um, focus breathing compensation which works a little bit, but it's still no substitute for a lens with low focus breathing uh, to begin with. And you will note from these video clips that there's a little bit of a crop factor when you're using that feature. There's also a new uh, overlay that allows you a kind of a, a focusing overlay for video that allows you to really visually see what is before and after the plane of focus and what the actual plane of focus is. Some may really like this because it is so visual. Others may find it a little bit distracting. But one thing is certain, you have got a lot of video capabilities packed into this camera and it's been redesigned and so that they according to Sony you can record well over an hour of 4k 60 without any kind of overheating issues and so obviously that is going to be very welcome as well as noted, we have the new articulating LCD screen, which is a touch screen. I find it very, very useful. There are some other ergonomic improvements and the camera in hand, it feels a lot like the Alpha One, save without the secondary dial over here. We also now have the ability in slot number one to use um, CF Express type A cards, or you can use UH UHS two compatible SD cards in either one of the slots, same battery. But overall, we have got a great performance here. A camera that just feels right. If you're familiar at all with, with Sony cameras and improved grip depth, it just feels very good in the hand and I find the performance to be excellent. My list of complaints is really, really short. I've mentioned the viewfinder issue, the crop factor in 4K 60. Uh, outside of that, you know, really there is very little to complain about and a lot to praise about this camera. And so if you're looking for a, just kind of a general purpose, jack of all trades Sony camera, it's hard to look at any better option than this one at this point, unless you have a really huge budget and go all the way to the Alpha One. Think of this as being an Alpha One Lite at about a third of the price, and that makes it a very compelling option for a lot of shooters. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, you can find linkage also to my full text review, which will give you all the deep dive information as well. There's a linkage to an image gallery as well, also buy links if you'd like to purchase one. Linkage to follow myself or Craig on social media to become a patron, purchase channel merchandise, and of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and let the light in.